Hi, welcome to Community Services Unlimited's Garden Gateway Virtual Workshop. My name is Tomer, and this month we'll be talking about managing lead contamination in your garden. It's important to think about where you're going to plant your garden for a few reasons. In, in past videos, we've talked about sun exposure or access to water. Another important thing to consider is having clean soil or if your soil is contaminated with lead or other heavy metals or pesticides. Lead contamination is most harmful to children and can cause cognitive risks that will be long term. It also affects adults as well with memory and concentration and muscle pain. More information about lead contamination and risks, um, we recommend you go to the LA County Department of Public Health Lead Poisoning Prevention Program. You can contact them at 1-800-LA-4-LED or they're also online. The most likely sources of contamination of your soil are from debris from lead paint, from old house paint or paint found on your garage, on your fencing, as well as chemicals related to auto repair or if you live close to an airport, there's uh, runoff from fuel as well. It's important to know where you're planting uh, in your garden in case there's lead contamination from an old fence, garage, or maybe an old parked car. Um, so it's important to test your soil and this is how you take a sample. When selecting an area to test, you'll want to collect soil from two to three spots across the area. Dig a hole that's eight to 10 inches deep. Try to collect a sample that doesn't have too much mulch, rocks, or roots in it, getting as much loose soil as possible. Put the soil from each of your sample sites into a single bucket and then stir it up so that the samples are combined. Label a bag with your name and the date. Place no more than a quart's worth of soil in the bag, approximately three to four cups. If you're a Garden Gateway participant in South Central LA, you can bring that sample on May 22nd to be tested. Details on how to have your sample tested will be sent to all registered participants. Learn more about how to register for Garden Gateway at csuinc.org. Okay, if you find that you do have lead, one of the ways to get rid of toxic soil in your garden is to remove it, is to shovel it all out and move it to a different location. And you have to make sure that you're digging it deep enough uh, to where your plant roots would reach. If it's a large space, you may need professional help um, because it can be a big job. Moving contaminated soil from your garden can also be hazardous because you are spreading or can spread the toxins around. So there shouldn't be kids around when you do that and it should be something to think about. Another easy way to avoid contaminated soil is to build a raised bed uh, in your garden space. Just making sure that it is tall enough and won't um, mix with the contaminated soil. There are two other strategies to help um, manage lead contamination. One is to add compost or clean soil to the contaminated garden space. The second is phytoremediation, which is where you use plants to help remove or absorb contaminated uh, heavy metals or different pesticides 
from your soil. Both of these strategies don't completely remove lead from the soil, um, so you shouldn't plant food that you plan on eating there, and um, it could still be hazardous to children, so you should keep them out of those areas. A final strategy that we want to highlight uh, for garden safety is always washing your hands after you've gardened. Um, remove your shoes before you enter your house um, or wearing some sort of uh, apron or covering while you garden is helpful because then you can remove it and just try to limit all the debris that you're bringing into your home. Thanks for joining us on our Community Services Unlimited uh, Expo Urban Mini Farm and for our Garden Gateway Virtual Workshop. Check out our YouTube channel for other videos. To learn more about Garden Gateway Workshops, visit csuinc.org. Thank you.